Hello. There have been a lot of terrific Games Workshop boxed games over the years, but there's one genre that they very rarely seem to get involved with, and that is solo games. Sure, there are a couple of examples here and there, but there's only one 40k set game that has a solo mode that I keep returning to again and again. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today we're talking about the brief history of Assassinorum Execution Force. I normally talk about games that are a fair bit older than this one. In fact, Assassinorum Execution Force only came out in the recent past of 2015, which is, oh, uh, <laughs> approaching a decade ago now. Good grief. But yes, this is a much newer game than most I talk about here on the channel. But there's two good reasons for that. One is that I just got back from a brief holiday and I haven't completed writing my next deep dive just yet. It's on Judge Dredd. It's going to be a really fun one, I think. And number two, well, I just really like this game. Assassinorum Execution Force is a Games Workshop boxed game that allows between one and four players to cooperate as Imperial Assassins on a mission to stop a deadly chaos ritual before it's too late. The mechanics are relatively simple, allowing for quick setup and play. The Assassins must make their way through a maze of corridors and rooms, avoiding or killing Chaos Renegades and finding their way into the Temple of Shades. The order of the day is assassination, and you have to make the most of your stealthy capabilities because you cannot take much damage before dying. This mission is of the utmost importance. You have to make sure that the Chaos Sorcerer is stopped before they can unleash the very warp itself into the fabric of the Imperium. Before we get into the full military briefing on this game, why not give this video a like, just in case the Officio Assassinorum are keeping an eye on you. But this is a game that is lots of fun. It's four assassins taking on pure evil chaos. And why not start by taking a little look at the history of these playful scamps, the Imperial Assassins? Where did they come from in the universe of 40k? The earliest Imperial Assassins actually date back to the very beginning of the 40k universe, in the pages of the game's first edition, Rogue Trader. As with all 40k lore, a lot has been added, revised, or removed over time, but the seeds of this modern art of Imperial assassination were right there at the start, and they have always been on the darker, grimmer end of the spectrum. If a planet can be restored to the Imperium by clever diplomacy, an expensive, troublesome, and destructive war will be avoided. Imperial agents are fully versed in all of the tricks of diplomacy, including clandestine ones such as bribery, popular agitation, economic sabotage, terrorism, torture, murder, and assassination. The assassin is one of the most useful of these diplomatic agents. His job is simple. He is there to eliminate key individuals among the opposition. Just some classic good guy stuff. And as well as how the Imperial Assassins were used, there was also plenty of detail about the training and techniques of these dirty little secrets of the Imperium. Assassins are recruited from the feral worlds as infants and undergo 10 years extensive training at the School of Assassins on Earth. From then on, they continue to live at and operate from the secret headquarters of the Assassins, said to lie somewhere on the Imperial planet. So, the Assassins existed since the beginning of the game, but it wouldn't be until Ian Watson's vibrant exploration of the 40k universe in his story The Alien Beast Within and his novel Inquisitor that there would be a deeper delve into the nature of these secretive agents, providing a greater impression of their phenomenal and dangerous capabilities. Initiates of the Calidus can imitate all sorts and conditions of people. Who can do so better than you, Melindy? You have even mimicked a humanoid Eldar sufficiently well to convince human beings. What do you know about gene stealers? The original entry on Assassins in Rogue Trader talked about a shape-altering drug called polymorphine that they could use to change their form and infiltrate their enemies. This was expanded upon by Watson using his character of Melindy 
a member of the Calidus Assassin Temple in his stories for 40k. He would also talk about the training and techniques and tactics of some of the other branches of what would become known as Officio Assassinorum, the Imperium's assassination experts. An injection of the shape-changing drug polymorphine would allow any trained assassin of her shrine to alter their appearance by effort of will. This was one of the specialities of the Calidus Shrine, the keynote of which was cunning, just as the Vindicare Shrine specialised in vengeance, and the Eversaw Shrine in unstoppable attack. The distinctions between these shrines or temples of the Officio Assassinorum were expanded upon in subsequent army lists and codexes, such as the one included for the Heroes of the Imperium in the third edition called Rules for 40k. Tellingly, this page was headed with the classic Imperium thought for the day, the loyal slave learns to love the lash. As Ian Watson had laid out, there were three relatively common and well-defined temples of assassins that you could find on ancient Terra. The Vindicare, who specialise in vengeance and revenge, and are armed with deadly, long-range sniper rifles. The Calidus, the most cunning temple, which specialises in artful deception and employs the polymorphine drug to take on new and dangerous forms. And the Evisor assassins, gruesome, bioengineered killing machines. A fourth common temple was later expanded upon as well, the Colexus, a group of psychic assassins possessed of horrifying mind powers and a very uncomfortable social presence at parties. There have of course been other temples as well, but I can only share so much forbidden knowledge in one video. Typically, the assassins work alone, deployed on stealthy missions under the cover of darkness, or employed as surgical operatives on the front lines of the Imperium's many wars. But every now and again, there is a threat that is so deadly, so universe-shaking, so convenient for the plot, that the High Lords of Terror have to take extreme action. In Nemesis by James Swallow, the 13th book of the Horus Heresy series, we see one such desperate operation, and this one is understandably so. The Officio Assassinorum dispatches a squad of assassins to take down the greatest threat to the Imperium and the Emperor in quite some time, the traitor warmaster Horus. The squad includes assassins from the different shrines of the Officio Assassinorum, bringing together skill sets from the most deadly operatives available to the Imperium. An execution force of four assassins were also dispatched to support Grey Knights in their battles against a Nurgle infection in the DLC for the Chaos Gate Demon Hunters game from Complex Games. And of course, there have been many other stories about assassins on solo missions out and about across the galaxy over the years. And then more recently, there was another such series of events that necessitated a similar course of action, the one that's perhaps not quite so famous. On the planet of Achilles Prime, the Sorcerer Lord Severin Drask of the Crimson Slaughter Chaos Space Marines is attempting to work a great evil. Having uncovered the Temple of Shades, an ancient site of eldritch power, he is intending to harness its energies to unleash a tide of demons that will drown the Imperium and all who dwell within it. That is the story that is told both on the tabletop and in this novella by Joe Perino, which I have read and I don't want to be too critical about because it's got some cool scenes with assassins doing cool stuff, but it's only 125 pages. In the game, you will find that the Sorcerer Lord Severin Drask has situated himself in the Temple of Shades, where his working is now underway. The time left until Drask's ritual is complete and all is lost is measured by the progress of his familiar on the dial, stepping forward each turn. In order to access the Temple of Shades though, the assassins must first locate a control room where they can flip a switch and turn the power back on, and then they need to find the Teleportarium, from which they, unsurprisingly, can teleport into the Temple of Shades. To find these key locations, they must move around the map, investigating the randomly placed room cards until they come across the ones they need, but the corridors through which they must move are full of dangerous chaos enemies like Chaos Cultists and Space Marines. And even though all of these assassins are incredibly deadly, they are also frightfully fragile. They can typically only take two wounds before they are killed and are out of the game. Gameplay is surprisingly quick and simple. Assassins can take two actions per turn, like moving, healing, sprinting, shooting, or fighting, 
The enemy models move around the board using predetermined patrol routes, and they react to the assassins when they come across them or when assassins move across their paths. Normally, they will try and find or kill the assassins, and they can raise the alarm and bring more enemies to bear. And this is, I think, why I find the game to be so much fun. The AI for the Chaos Renegades is not complicated. It's really simple, very rudimentary. But it does mean that you and up to three friends can play sneaky assassins together. You can take it in turns to stealth around and to take out those enemies. It kind of reminds me of old multiplayer PC games way back in the 90s like Warlords. That you would all get around the PC together and play, taking it in turns and pressing your buttons. Simple stuff, but just really good fun. Or, if you want, you can play all four assassins yourself and just have a great time. I would love to talk a little bit more about the designers behind this game, but unfortunately they aren't credited in the rulebook. But I do know that the very cool cover art is by Marek Okon, a concept artist who frequently works in film and video games. There are precious few Games Workshop games that offer a solo experience. The first edition of Space Hulk and its Deathwing expansion are probably the most notable example, but those are hard to come by these days. So I find it very cool to be able to play a little solo mission in the 41st millennium with a ticking clock and some chaos bad guys to kill. There are even a list of video game style achievements that are included in the rulebook so you can adapt your playstyle to gain a specific trophy each time you play. Whether that's something as simple as just winning the game or as absurdly difficult as completing the mission with just a single assassin. White Dwarf even published a list of extra achievements on top of that so that you had even more reasons to play the game again. But okay, there's only one mission in this game. You've found the Teleportarium, you've made it into the Temple of Shades, you've taken out the Chaos Sorcerer. What do you do next? Well, fortunately, there's just a little bit more life in the game, again thanks to White Dwarf. One additional mission, or at least a new big bad for the mission, was published in White Dwarf, providing you with an even bigger model than the already doesn't fit on the board Chaos Sorcerer, this one being a Demon Prince. And you could even swap out the Chaos Cultists for suitably demonic followers instead. Yeah, I don't think I'll get the achievement for doing this one on my own. Listen, this is not the deepest gameplay experience in the Games Workshop canon. It's not quite a classic, and it's not quite a current game either. But it is a quick game to set up, and a quick game to play, and a quick game to strip down and put away again. It is great fun whether you play it solo, or whether you play it with three friends, uh, with beer and biscuits, and just having a great time. It is always fun to get together a squad of ultimate badasses to take out and assassinate a chaos sorcerer. It's just fluffy fun in the 41st millennium. And that is why I wanted to talk about it a bit with you today and just share a game that I quite enjoy. <laughs> but that's it. That's all I've got. Thank you very much for watching. I am Jordan and this is Jordan Sorcery. So the boards for this game aren't too dissimilar to Death Watch Overkill, or the later editions of Space Hulk, or Betrayal at Calf even. So I wonder if someone's put together a mega scenario that just uses all of them in a massive assassination scenario that's just completely absurd. And if you are aware of such a scenario, please forward it to me, because I think that would be really fun and I would enjoy that. <laughs>